let's get right into it. So th- over the past few weeks, there have been so many different pastors who have fallen from grace, who have uh, fallen into sin, who have messed up along the way. And I'm beginning to get a bit concerned as to why so many pastors are being exposed in such a manner. So I want to discuss what it does this mean going forward? In this video, we're going to talk about what, why this is happening and what does this mean and why is God doing this? So before I do that, please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you want amazing, amazing and engaging Christian content. This is a channel for you. This is a place for you to, to, to go. So a couple of weeks ago, the pastor of the biggest church, I believe in the U.S., Robert Morris, um, has been outed as, for in 1987, sexually assaulting a 12-year-old parishioner. And this was a very, very shocking, because similar to Tony Evans, he's he was a, a pastor that I really followed. I really liked his teachings, and uh, I like what he was saying, but... To hear such a fall from grace, it really messes me up. It really kind of, it really broke my heart. And I, I think, first off, as a Christian, anybody that falls should break your heart. It shouldn't be something where only if certain people fall, it affects you. But whenever somebody falls and messes up, it should break your heart. If you have the heart of God, anytime sin is present, um, it should bother you to see someone falling into sin. But unfortunately, we, we live in time where folks celebrate it, where folks use this as an opportunity to create video upon video and post upon post to highlight a person's missteps and they fail to use grace. Grace covers. When you have grace for someone, when you love someone, you cover their sin. You don't, it's not tolerate their sin, but you cover them in this time of restoration. Because more, more, more likely than not, Pastor Morris right now, and just like Tony Evans, they're probably in a bad place to know that they let so many people down, that they have been exposed and hurt so many people. It's a very good possibility that, that they're upset and heartbroken over what happened. So instead of pouncing on them, instead of using this thing to highlight them, let's let's cover them with grace and love and think and, and empathy as they go through what they go through. So um, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to hear. It breaks my heart to see things are happening, but it's happening a lot. As I mentioned, Tony Evans was also someone that had to step away from ministry for a while because of an unnamed sin. And you have different pastors and different preachers on a small level and a grander level as well have been fall, have been falling morally. And what does this mean? Why is this happening? You know, um, this is, you know, something that, you know, I heard God say, you know, I don't really get too caught up in the God said, God said, God said. But at the beginning of the new year, um, one of the words that I heard God say was exposure, that God was getting ready to expose a lot of people, like things that are being done in in the dark are going to begin to get exposed, that those that have been living foul and still in the pulpit. God is getting ready to expose. And I feel a lot of that is what's happening. It's not that to show that these persons can't minister, but the exposure is a good thing. Hear me out on this one. Exposure is a good thing. Because of exposure, it often forces people to stop living in sin. If you didn't have a child out of wedlock, um, you would probably still be having sex. If you didn't get booked and, and sent to jail for doing something, you probably would be doing it in a secret place. So a lot of times God uses exposure as a means of correction because he understands by by saying, okay, now I've been trying to talk to you soft and quietly and you're not listening. Now I'm going to expose you. Now I'm going to show people who you really are. And hopefully by that embarrassment and that exposure, it can get you to stop it. So a lot of times we we run from exposure, but that exposure helps us stop sinning, right? That that you know putting our business out there is often what God uses to get us to a point where we stop doing what we're not supposed to do. If God don't ex- didn't expose the fact that your man was cheating on you, you'll probably still be with him. 
the same man, the same man that God is telling you to leave a long time ago. So God said, okay, I got to put your business out on front street in order to get you to a place of stop doing what you're doing. So, yeah, so it's, it's tough, man. It's it's tough to see despite, I believe it's, it's not the devil, but it's God, God bringing honor back to his pulpit, God bringing people of good character, um, and integrity in 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 high places. So I think it's not saying it's a death sentence for neither or anyone that falls, but I also believe there's a purpose behind it and God's hand is involved. And this reminds, and for me as a pastor, as a leader, this reminds me, and this was a, a jolt to me that no one is exempt, that I need to make sure that my life is right before God. That I want to make sure that I'm living right before God. And I'm not don't have any hidden sin or anything that I'm not supposed to do. And if I do, get it right because God will expose you. And the reason why God does that is because he loves his sheep so much to leave them in the hands of a bad shepherd. Right? He loves us so much. He wants to make sure we have good leaders of example. And we, and we have to be careful because the enemy loves to attack leadership. Because he knows if he attacks one person, it could f- cause a thousand to fall. If he attacks one pastor, 85% of the congregation could fall. And that's the times that we live in. And so what he does, he, you have this secret sin. You have this thing that you're, that you're not dealing with, that, that you're constantly doing. And then as you sit here, he allows you to get more power. He allows you, the devil allows you to get more influence and he sends people to your churches, send people to your YouTube page and gives you more influence and more power just to get to a point where you fall. Right? He gives you a big audience to you falling because he understands if he does that, a lot more people will fall. And this is why it's dangerous for us to be in leadership and to not be aware of our lives. Yes, it's God exposing people, but we have to. We are giving God things to expose. We're not being accountable. We're not um, looking after our lives, knowing that, you know, as as leaders, it's a responsibility. This is something that I deal with every single moment of my life. I take, I sometimes think I take, I think I take leadership and pastoring so serious, too serious sometimes, because every decision I make, every choice I make, everything I do, things I tweet, things I wear, things I post, I'm really aware of doing these things. Also, in a secret thing where I say, God, you know, um, I had a, a couple days where I didn't read my word, I didn't have devotion time, I was just so busy, a lot going on, and I was so busy, and I, and, and I got to the point where. I sat there and I got I got up in the morning. I said, nope, I have to go out and pursue God. I got to seek the face of God. I can't allow myself to be at a place where I sit here and neglect my time with God because other people are depending on it. So the same thing when it comes to sin, even like little quote unquote small sins or things that are harmless. I try to make sure my life is not it does not have it. Is it easy? No, but I, I'm really trying to make sure my life is right before God. No one is perfect. You see, Paul, Paul said, every time I want to see good, bad is right there in front of me. So that, that, that shows a struggle. Like no one is exempt from that struggle. No one's exempt from going through those difficult times where you sit here and you're like, oh my God, you know, and I've, I messed up. Oh God, I, I've done something wrong. God, I got I to gotta break this thing and, and not continue to do that. You know, we all have been there. But I think, you know, God is showing the level of expectation he has for us and level of, you know, I expect, I expect my leaders, I expect my, my shepherds, I expect people to have a different moral standard. Is it, is it not fair for a pastor to be held accountable in a different way? No, it's not fair. That's the cost. That's, that's the, the, the bill you have to pay for being leadership. Being in leadership because you get all these accolades, you get a salary, you get a pastor's appreciation, you get a trip, you get this, you get that. But behind that come a level of accountability that we need to bring back to the church. Not only that, we, when I say we, I mean the the members must hold their leaders accountable. We got to stop tolerating the, the nonsense. I've seen churches where pastors are homosexual. 
of two two men, a, um, a male pastor who introduces the first gentleman or first man of the church, and you hear folks clapping and woo-hooing like this is my pastor. I'm like you're tweaking, like you can't sit here and support this type of stuff. You gotta hold, you gotta keep the standard. So a lot of the accountability, it shouldn't have to get to God. It has to be begin in the pews. It's like I talked to my to my son. And oftentimes he talks about, like, I have an 11-year-old, I have a 5-year-old, and I have a 3-year-old. And I told my, I tell my son, like, certain things, don't let it get to dad. Don't let it get to mom. You guys work it out. You guys help each other. You guys fix it before it gets to me, right? Before it gets to your pastor, before it gets that, that God has to deal with it. He leaves us there also to judge. Judge accordingly to the word of God. So we have to also hold bishops and archbishops and apostles accountable. Hold Pastor Ron accountable. Please do. And I, I, I welcome it because, you know, I, if I'm doing something wrong, I want, to do, I want to know I'm doing something wrong. I have no issues with that. And I think one of the reasons why this is happening so much, these moral failures, the lack of accountability. We, we have created a culture in the church where people feel that when you call people out, when you disagree, then you're being demonic. You're being um, a devil worshiper. No, you're holding someone accountable for the betterment of the first a person. Say, listen, what you're doing is wrong. Stop doing it. God's not pleased. But secondly, for, to cover the church, because now this church might close, might lose members because of what was done. The name of the church is tarnished because of what was done. So I really think it's it's crucial. I think it's important that we sit here and we learn to hold each other accountable. Stop applauding this nonsense. Stop tolerating nonsense in the church. Call it out. You are not wrong for that. And if you're in a church where you can't hold your leaders accountable, then you know what? You're in the wrong church. Accountability is your friend. And and we need it. So this is this is, you know. I say also as well, like, you know, pastors are human, so they're not going to be perfect. They're going to mess up. But I also think that there's a level of decorum that's expected. Right. And I and I and by no means is the life of um, the ministry of Tony Evans, uh, more Pastor Morris or anyone who has fallen. Big, you know, big when I say big headlines and big churches or on a smaller local level, it's, it's never over. God can use you. God can restore you, but you must also serve your punishment and do what you have to do. So, you know, though we're not perfect, let's not use it as an excuse to tolerate sin in our lives or for us to tolerate sin in someone else's life. Life, I think it's important for us to call this stuff out. And I think God is slowly but surely... Um, not removing, like, I feel I don't feel God is removing these leaders because God's a God of grace and mercy and God is a God of restoration. But I think God is using these prominent examples to remind us his expectation for his leaders. So if you have a church of 50 members or 50,000 members, God still holds the very same standard for your life. So when I see this, when it tell me, Pastor Brown, make sure your life is right. Anything that you're battling, fix it. Any, any sin in your life, take it away. And remain humble because tomorrow might be your day where God exposes you. So make sure your heart is right and focus on God because you never know. But it's tough to see what happened and it's sad because, you know, we, we all get caught up doing podcasts and doing posts and commenting, but it's actually a person that had to deal with that. Her name is on, you know, different social media posts. Folks know her whole government name. So you're probably looking her up and in her DMs and saying, why, you know, are you okay? Or on the other hand, they probably some people cursing her out in her DM in, in her DMs. We don't know. So it it's first and foremost outside of the pastors, anyone who's affected by this stuff, our prayers go out to them. Anyone who feels the pain who's dealing with it, our prayers go out to them that they get better, that they get help, that they um, get healing 
in what they're going through. But all these, why are these moral failures happening? Why it just, we have become a little lax when it comes to leaders, when it comes to leadership, when it comes to accountability. And I believe God, th- these are like alarms. Some of us see these alarms and hit the snooze button and go back to sleep. But others, like myself, it causes me to wake up and be very aware to watch and pray. Because you never know when an enemy is creeping to get you to fall. So be careful. Young leader, older leader who's watching, be careful. Make sure you walk in integrity because the enemy's on a prowl. He's always on a prowl to get us to fall. Don't give him any room. You know, if you're having meetings and stuff, if you're going out and stuff, bring an accountability partner. I'll never forget my dad one time. My dad was a deacon in his church, and he was he was um, he shared a story about a, a, a young lady who called him up middle of the night. It's like, oh, Fred Ruben, it's like Brother Ruben, um, I need prayer. Or deacon, they called Jack Ruben. So it was like, deacon, I need prayer. Please come by and pray with me. So my dad was, dad was a man of wisdom. So he took so he my mom up and said, yo, let's, um, um, so-and-so call me. Come with me to um, pray for her. So she she did it. And when they got to this person's house, she had no issues. She had no problems. All she had was some lingerie on, a little nightgown on, as Haitians call Shimmy's Dini. So obviously it was a setup. And if my dad wasn't wise to bring my mom with him, he may have been caught up in something, even if he didn't do anything. He would have been caught up in a situation where they they would have said, oh, he was at my house, just me, me and him. At this time of night, I'm half naked. He tried something on me, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. So I think one of the things that we have to use is wisdom. Not saying anything is going to happen, but you won't give, don't give the enemy place to speak. Be humble. Learn how to speak to people. Learn how to treat people right. Learn how to talk to people. And don't give the enemy a place to speak or any room to wiggle within your life and your ministry. I pray this video blesses you. I pray you, you learn something from it. Watch and pray. Keep your eyes on God because God is coming back soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video. I thank you so much for watching. For watching. God bless you. I love you. 